Hello and welcome um, to this session around um, painting, uh, coffee painting uh, with uh, Shibakshan Adi. And today what we are going to do is we are going to, of course, start by introducing a little bit around our partners as well, because it's been a fascinating journey so far. And what we are trying to do is through these sessions, we are going to bring in the unique, um, you know, the, the unique creative practices that we have built uh, over time. And to start with, of course, I mean, we have got um, Jain Tarai, who is the founder director of Sangit Foundation. And we have got also Soma Mitra, who is the uh, founder director of Blue Palette joining us today in the studio. And we're going to actually uh, do a little bit of coffee painting as well uh, from behind the scenes, really, with our guests today. But before we bring our, uh, uh, on stage our, our guests here uh, for this afternoon, uh, we will start by inviting um, Jain Tere to talk a little bit around uh, Sangit Foundation and also because uh, Jain Tere has got a very good connection with Sudakshina who, who is going to be our guest today. So over to you, uh, Jain Tere. Thank you, Indrani, uh, for uh, having Sangit Foundation as a partner. Uh, you might notice that I've tried to wear a kurta, which is coffee color. Is it coffee color or maybe not? So it's, it's yeah. basically dark colored. So, well, it's not painted by me. It was bought. So, but still, it you know, if it represents coffee painting, why not? So that's the idea of having this. Um, but thank you so much. I mean, this is uh, Manav Utsav is amazing, awesome uh, celebration of the South, South Asian diaspora. And, you know, we do work. Uh, Sangeet Foundation, the name says, talks about Sangeet, but we believe in happiness through music and the arts and arts is an integral part of it and uh, when we say happiness it's a state of mind dig a bit deeper it's about mental health it's all about creating awareness about mental health and addressing uh, mental health using music and the arts and in this case we have very special art form today uh, which we'll be using so the whole idea is to say uh, use this opportunity to create that awareness, to, to say that please be aware, mental health is a real thing. If you do feel a bit down, if you do feel that something is not okay, it's all right. It's okay to be okay. And that's that's a catchphrase nowadays. But having said that, you know, you need to reach out to people so that you, if you're not feeling okay, you need to reach out to various people and see where the, situa the issue is. So with that, uh, what we would uh, want to say is also, if you are feeling a bit under the sun and if you think, you know, under the weather, and if you think you are, you do need to reach out to somebody, we are there in Sangeet Foundation. You can reach out to us. Uh, happy to help if you are willing to be, to volunteer and be with us. That is also fantastic. We look forward to that. And, uh, and of course, uh, today is going to be a fabulous workshop. Uh, I know Shudu Kennedy from for the last 25 years, long time since she was in Singapore. Probably um, she will uh, talk about it a bit more later on. But for the moment, that's all from, from me. Thank you. And I hope you do enjoy this. And it does give you happiness through this form of art. Thank you. That's excellent. Thank you very much. Yes. And I think that this is this is quite unique, isn't it? Like we were talking about before as well. Like we had these conversations before that there is a there is a connection when, when you move your hands and you connect by actually expressing yourself or they may be through your, you know, other ways of expressions, whether they be dance or through music. You know, it's it's a kind of a thing where you possibly enjoy more freedom. And I believe that creative people like, you know, sometimes they think that we don't have any sort of creative um, parts within us and we can't draw, we can't do this. However, I think that there is a, you know, yesterday we had a session where we were talking about breaking that barrier and uh, seeing through beyond that barrier. So in that point, I'll bring in Soma Mitra, who is the founder director of Blue Palette, to kind of tell us a little bit about her journey. And I know that she watched the children. She has got lots, lots of workshops that she does. Uh, in Mumbai. So over to you, Soma. Yeah. Hi, Rani. Thank you for very Hello. much for having me as a partner, having a Blue Palette as a partner in Mana Utsa. A wonderful initiative, I must say. Uh, so talking about Blue Palette, here we believe in the profound power of art. 
art as in uh, the form of visual art so uh, generally we take classes we conduct classes but the classes are a little different over here so here we we tell people ki everyone is an artist everyone is an artist we just help them out to bring out that artist in them so that is all about the main uh, feature of blue palette we, we ask them what you want to draw we will help you in drawing in in making how to draw it so uh, here uh, we are completely without any curriculum without any uh, without any uh, rigid rules and regulations here it is all about breaking the rules making your mind free and doing whatever expressing yourself through art so that's why you know to get uh, uh, to get a coffee painting session uh, i was so very much excited about it because uh, when it comes to art it is not only colors whatever you can use to express yourself now coffee uh, is something which has a very strong and rich aroma uh, we uh, it also comes like everything comes with its own uh, you know wines and oils so the caffeine part if we can take out like while we having a lot of coffee we have we are taking in caffeine now while we paint with coffee there is no intake of that caffeine you are uh, enjoying the aroma you are having that mood and you are enjoying that wonderful color you you are using it in different ways so that's something which will be very much interesting and i would love to see i have seen shudakshana dee's work so and they are they are just amazing so uh, i thought yes it is an, a wonderful opportunity and i would say it is an wonderful opportunity for everyone to you know uh, have uh, another another medium of expressing themselves i must say so uh, yeah looking forward to what's the workshop i have my coffee sachet ready to paint with oh well yes i mean i have got mine as well so i've kind of kept it handy oh, wow. and also i have i don't have like fantastic brushes and stuff but at least something that i packed it at home you know it's just <laughs> will we'll do the job i think um so we'll see how it goes but this is okay. the time possibly we are going to um get him to the canadi here on the studio and um i'll try and bring her in now hello hi hello how are you today? hello everyone i'm fine hello. thank you hello everyone and uh, a big thank you to indrani and joanso for inviting me on this panel and i enjoy painting with coffee and would love to share my experience with others and also show how coffee can be used as a medium after using uh, the traditional medium for years i started painting with coffee and i thoroughly enjoy it so let's start to this program with enthusiasm It's good to have you, Shudhakar Nadi. Thank you, and and I leave it to you, leave you to it, to and for everybody to enjoy. I'll be in the backstage, and I'll be enjoying this show. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today. Really, it's it's a real honor, you know. And um, you know, it's a time where possibly we have tested out different kinds of mediums and everything. However. coffee is something quite unique you know and, and we've not we've not we're not exposed to that kind of uh, painting i believe that uh, not much is done in here as well so it will be wonderful this session i believe that you know we are, we're going to learn a lot and i know lots of people have been looking forward to this session as well for this afternoon so uh, you know i'm i'm getting my um um your some of the videos and and uh, images backgrounds so we are we are doing that and we are all set in the studio but over to you i just wanted to ask that what's been your inspiration really for 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 the coffee painting and where did it come from and and if you tell us a little bit about that that would be wonderful well uh, i would start with my general inspiration into art and uh, that came totally uh, my mother has been my constant source of inspiration throughout my life especially in my artistic activities and uh, 
she imbibed in me the eye for art and to uh, taught me how to love artistic things and she gave me the freedom to experiment explore and create without any fear i never felt the fear of uh, failure i was allowed to do whatever i wanted to do and she appreciated it so i think that was a very big support for me and that plus my background in science i think made me experiment with coffee after painting with traditional medium for quite some time i started painting with coffee and uh, there is a little history which uh, i think i will talk about later but uh, before that uh, indrani if you can uh, show the painting uh, titled uh, bondi then i can talk about it first a little bit and then go on Uh, this painting was a commissioned work, and I thoroughly enjoyed doing this one because it shows the mother and child's uh, love, warmth, security. And while I was doing this painting, it reminded me of my mother, who passed away in the year nineteen ninety-five, and I did this work in two thousand nineteen. but while i was working i was constantly thinking about my mother so this painting has a very special place in my heart and uh, this is done with coffee entirely done with coffee what i do is i do not use anything to uh, make the white part of the painting that is the white of the paper and the rest is all just coffee So, you know, this is this is wonderful. I mean, you know, if I'm seeing at the screen now, and I'm thinking, well, you know, it's impossible to visualize it without any kind of other uh, paint medium. So I can't visualize these kind of depth and the lights and the shades and everything. And uh, you know, it, it's a work of wonder, I would say. And my question to you is that, you know, why coffee? Like, why did you choose coffee to start with? Okay, that is a little story I have. That uh, once I was at my son's place in Boston, and that particular trip I did not carry any of my uh, usual paint materials like watercolor and stuff. So what happened to me after a few days? I start craving for doing some kind of painting, and uh, I had nothing there. so every morning we would have coffee and there would be a little bit of coffee left in the espresso cup from where it is poured out into the bigger cup and have with milk so that little uh, coffee left in the espresso cup tempted me to try out and i used the brush from my granddaughter and i started painting with it and uh, indrani you can show the first painting i did with coffee which is titled butterfly you are muted kendrani we can not hear you okay sorry yeah i'm just saying that it is loading <laughs> okay. yeah it is loading okay while so. it's loading i can uh, tell more about uh, my coffee painting that uh, later on i came to uk and i had to stay in uk for quite some time this is my first painting 
the painting you have just uploaded and uh, this, this is, is done on ordinary paper not even watercolor paper but it came out quite well i thought and it's i amazing. i thought i should do more work with copy so after this uh, period we came to stay in uh, reading in uk for some time because my husband has an assignment there and i i think i landed in, in september and the daylight was fading rapidly and i tried to do my artwork with my usual watercolor it didn't come out so well because i was working under artificial light and in the morning when i when the sun came out i did not like my colors at all i felt very frustrated then i thought let me try coffee again and i started painting with coffee and i was very happy with that monochromatic medium the fun part of coffee is that it is monochromatic and it has this very warm color which uh, i really like and while i'm painting i get the aroma of coffee which is also very enjoyable so i continued to paint with coffee and then uh i was uh, requested to put up a solo exhibition in reading of coffee and two of my works got sold so i was very very happy i also took part in another exhibition where, during that stay in reading which is uh, the Lo london coffee festival they have a platform called coffee Pro project coffee art and uh, they ask for submission of paintings from artists and then they select and this place was worked and if anything gets sold the proceeds go to the coffee growing areas in tanzania who do not get clean water so i like the idea and i gave one of my works and that was selected for exhibition so that was my the first part of my journey into painting with coffee and this is excellent like i know i mean you have had a, a very um you know what i should say i mean it's a, a i won't say that it's difficult but it has been possibly something that you have enjoyed so much that and then you have taken it as a profession and i think that that's a kind message that we want to get out to the audience as well because it's very empowering you know some people who start um um you know, exploring some of their creative uh pathways at a very later uh kind of stage but they don't know actually how to make this up so what can you can you give our audience a little bit around like how difficult or easy was your journey and i know that we've got a journey video from from you as well that we are going to definitely play because that's going to be something that our audience will enjoy definitely yes and and i'll be showing some techniques that i have developed and while i show those techniques uh, you will be able to make out that it is uh, a very versatile medium coffee is a very versatile medium i can use it like watercolor i can use it like uh, oil like charcoal i can get all kinds of effects with coffee so it is versatile but it is quite challenging and uh, as we discuss the techniques i will talk about that and maybe uh, we can also show them the video where i have held workshop i have held the coffee painting workshops in usa uk and in india so uh, there is a video showing the coffee painting workshop which was held in the bavans in london and it was organized by john so so one more thing i would like to say is that uh, uh, the whole inspiration that i derived from my mother about art that came very handy when i moved to singapore and i lost both my parents within a span of 8 months and it was art which kept me going and that is the time when i got involved into programs in uh, the bengali association of singapore 
and I conducted programs for children and also for adults. And that's how I met John Zo and Nupur, his wife, Nupur. And it is a very long association with John Zo. Fantastic. That's, that's really wonderful. And I think that, you know, without, of course, um, John Zo, we won't be able to know about you as well. And I think that this is unique. Like, as part of Manavut Club, we are really, really proud that we actually managed to get in touch with you and host you here. So, I mean, before we move on to the next bit, maybe um, can I show you my journey um, video for the audience? Yeah, oh, if you want to show, yes, that's fine. <laughs> These are some of my work done with other mediums. And uh, I was very much influenced by the works of Tagore. That again, thanks to my mother for in calculating the love for the gold work and any of these words are from the illustrations of these words. This is the switch from other medium to coffee. And these are exhibitions. This is in US. This particular work was for Project Coffee Art. And these were for another exhibition, the Calcutta A Song in Sepia. This is a well known artist. Ravi Shankar. So these are some of my works, and this is the, the road that leads us. We don't know where, but the whole process of art is an inward journey. Absolutely amazing. So, uh, would you like to show the video of the workshop in? The, uh, uh, yes, yeah, I'll bring that up. But what's happening is that I don't know why, but it's kind of showing that it's still okay. Uh, it's never mind. Problem. If it is, uh, if so it is stuck, that's okay. Yeah, uh, it's stuck, but I will, can... I will, I will, it, yeah, uh, we'll come back so, to it. But maybe this is the time we can invite our viewers to join us yes. with their brush. And uh, you know, you've given all the, uh, of course, you know, the, the, the materials that we need to um, do the work. So um, we'll ask our viewers to join us. And, um, and really, may, there's a question, yeah, for you. I, I may talk about uh, the way I get my coffee paint from paint coffee ground. Like I told yes. you, I started painting with coffee in Boston at my son's place. And there they make coffee every day. And the coffee grounds are thrown away. So I used to collect those coffee grounds 
sometimes my daughter in law would use the coffee grounds as a fertilizer which is a goodie otherwise i would uh, collect the coffee grounds and i will put them out in the sun to dry crush it into powder form and then boil it with water for some time and again strain it take the filtrate and allow it to evaporate till i get a very thick paint that is the paint i would normally use but for today's workshop i have told you to use the instant coffee because you, that whole process of getting the coffee from coffee grounds is a uh, lengthy process so with instant coffee you can do the same thing you can add water to it and you can heat it to make it into a thick paste so i hope you have done that and uh, you can use any watercolor brush for this so there is no restriction in fact sometimes i use my oil painting brushes also to get effect i think i'll bring in soma i think she has a question there Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Dakshina, I would like to know, like, what are the paper, like, on which surface you suggest to do this uh, coffee painting mode? Paper, watercolor papers, or canvas? It is best on watercolor papers. Good quality watercolor paper. Mm -hmm. Then you can get all the textures. The dry brush effect comes out very well on watercolor paper. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so the thing is, so how you can try on canvas if you want to try. You can. Some people work on canvas, but I prefer paper. Okay. Okay. And so, how uh, do you preserve it? Like uh, after the paper, you are done on the paper. So definitely, yeah. watercolor papers need uh, a little bit of preservation norms because coffee, I know, is a little uh, you know have that sticky part. Like if you yes. keep it one on the other, it sticks to the other surface. right so yes. to, coffee how to get the coffee so first of all what i do i paint uh, sorry i spray the fixative which is used for pastel and other things this this is the dela rauni fixative so i use this fixative first i spray it on the painting after it has dried completely and then when you frame it one has to be very careful that the glass does not touch the painting once it happened and it ruined one of my work so the if the glass touches the painting as you said that coffee is sticky it will stick to the glass and it, you cannot take it off the glass anymore so when you are uh, framing it you should make sure that there is at least two layers of the matting to get the space between the glass and the painting otherwise you know even in my daughter in law's house where i did my first few paintings they were hanging on the wall without fixative without frame for quite a few years and nothing happened to those paintings but later on i stayed fixative and to frame them so i think coffee can last without any problem that's excellent yes yeah so my you've got um so i i think that possibly our audience is ready now with their brush so we have given them a little space in between um is uh, i mean do we go into doing the painting or do we do you want to share an exercise for our um audience here today how would you like to take it like i know that you've got okay. the voice to up from one that you want to yeah the, the, okay the first thing that i need to mention here is that when you are working with a monochromatic medium it is very important to have the tonal scale or the tonal value which gives you the uh, effect of raised surfaces the uh, undulation and things like that because it is just one color so with one color if you want to bring out the best of your painting you have to use the tonal values and 
you had one of my videos where i have demonstrated how to do the tonal scale so maybe if you can upload that video now that will be great uh is that the tonal video isn't it tonal scale yeah okay Yeah, so it's loading now. While it's loading, let me say a few more words about the tonal scale. That you have coffee, the coffee, espresso coffee, you've seen the color of espresso coffee. And if you dilute it with water, that paint that you have made, it can be diluted with water to get a very light shade of coffee. So we can have shades of coffee from light biscuit to a very dark rich color of the espresso coffee and these are actually the way of showing different uh, different uh, parts of the painting that you want to do and show the contrast if with a very dark head if you leave out a space which is white and surround it with the dark then you by doing the negative space you can highlight the white part and one must always remember that anything you want to highlight the white of the paper is the best thing to do that yeah mr selection and do you ever use colors along with copy have you ever done that using some any other no, colors no i think i think i am quite conservative about it and i would like to only use coffee and no other substance in it yeah we can see the video now the sound is not audible i think never mind then i will say here we are trying to create the tonal value so with a flat brush and a very light mixture of coffee and water i have made five rectangles and once it is dry i am putting the layer again on top of the leaving out the last one again when it is dry i'll put another layer now this time i'm covering the first three leaving out the last two this way if you continue you will get a very dark shade like the first one has the maximum number of layers which is the darkest and the last one is the lightest another way of getting tonal value is by putting a dark layer and then with water spreading it out to get the lightest shade now i'm using just plain water and the brush to get the lighter shade this way you can form a gradation of the shade the way you wish and that can give the effect of three dimensions so if you want to do it along with me you are most welcome here is a simple example of uh, using the tone the tonal value to draw a box first i am making a rectangle with the light very light shade of coffee
next i'm filling it up with that light shade of coffee and i'll leave a small rectangular piece white that is the surface of the box receiving maximum light once this is done i will allow it to dry before i put the next layer that is something very important we have to remember the you increase the depth of color by layering but the first layer has to dry completely before we apply the next layer so now with slightly darker shade of coffee i am putting the next layer if you don't allow it to dry then you may disturb the lower layer so if it is completely dry sometimes i use the hair dryer to dry it. only thing be careful not to use the hot air from the hair dryer so this forms the second layer with slightly darker tone once this has dried completely we are going to put the even darker layer on the third surface of the box that's with the help of different tones we are creating the three dimensional effect again i am very careful when i am laying the third layer for this if the brush is soft that helps that's why watercolor brushes are very good and one has to be very gentle with the touch there you can see now the box thank you indrani so i hope that was quite visible to everyone yeah it was just very nice it's very so informative were you able to were you able to follow and do anything or it was too far oh, i was so engrossed in seeing the i'll show you this one look oh got some wow. i was trying to do it and i was trying to do it and it's it, it actually came out okay Uh, but I think yeah. that we have to dry it a little bit. But this is like yes. a normal paper, you know, like a drawing paper. Okay. And um, okay. I think that it needs to dry. But I can see here how the shade has mm -hmm. changed from this part to this part when I was trying right. to kind of go a bit slow. Um, the interesting part is like with the coffee. Possibly we have to make a thicker version of it, isn't it? That the one that yes. we said before. Yeah. yeah. what so we need is if you have a thick if you have a thick paint by evaporating most of the water if you create the thick paint first of all it has that sticky nature like a poster color yeah because in in oil uh, in water colors also they put a kind of gum this is your daughter's work yes yeah wow she did it that's very yeah. nice very nice so the thick you, you need to use the thick paint because you can dilute it with water to get lighter shade but if you start with a light shade you have to wait for ages to let it dry and then put the uh, next layer that's why i would advise you to uh, heat the coffee with water to make it into a thick paint mm yeah I think it's it's incredible. It's really nice, and I think I'm feeling this. You know, as I'm doing it, 
So I can feel the smell is coming and I can feel it and it kind of uplifts your mood as well. As soon as you yeah. do it on the paper, okay. you know, it's kind of creating an ambience. And I believe that that's quite important when we talk about uh, mental health and we are talking about aromatherapy. So I think that, you know, the, the, the essential oils and all of it. But I think that coffee has got that boosting element in it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that's quite linked. So thank you very much for this. Yes, absolutely. And, um, and maybe you can show us. Will it take too yeah. long to upload the next video? Will it no, take it won't. long? No, no. Okay. Uh, are we are we going to show the um the oyster video now? Oyster, yes. The oyster mushroom painted with uh, coffee. Wow. Yes. Do you have a thicker paint? Wow. You have a thicker paint and the watercolor paper, right? So you can see the difference. Yeah, you can this see is when you use watercolor paper. paper and the thicker paint, you can see the difference. This is just wonderful. Yeah, this is just amazing. And the more you do, you enjoy the fun of doing it. So I will be showing the other video now where I've used different techniques to create tone. And just with the help of tone, you will see the painting coming out. Here I have actually made it darker, the sketching because I have to show what we are trying to do. And normally, if you keep it lighter, it's better because the pencil mark should not be showing through the work. So, I have applied one dark layer and then with water I am spreading it to from the kind of gradation I had shown earlier. Now I wet the area and I put some paint on it and then I use a thin brush to pull out and get the kind of mark that we have, those rib kind of thing on the mushroom. So I'm just using water and coffee to create the tone here. And uh, that's why, I, as I mentioned to you, Indrani, that uh, one has to use the, the thick paint and later on you can put water and allow it to spread. Like here, this one, it is spreading with water. I hope this uh, will be recorded and kept in the, uh, it will be found in YouTube later on. Okay. Then yes, it will be on YouTube. Can, so it's better then people for can audience. take more time. They can take more time to see this. And uh, maybe if you view it on your laptop instead of viewing it to the phone, you can see it much better. I think creating these shades are quite important, isn't it? To create that tonal, um, what is called tonal, yes. um, yes. yeah, thing on the um, paper. This is I believe all that. about tonal, tonal scale. Tonal scale. We're using yes. the tonal scale to bring out the effect that we want.
You said how important is it to kind of have a sketch beforehand when you do it? Like, is it always that you have to have a sketch uh, from the start? Uh, a to... light sketch would help, but you can do without a sketch. If, if your drawing skill is very good, then you don't need to use the sketch. So this is how it is going to look after it is finished. You can see the three-dimensional effect on it. That's why using different tones. This is wonderful. Yeah, I think there was another one that you um, actually was talking about um, before. Wow, um, wow, that's think. very nice. Wow, wonderful. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the other video is going to show the brush effect. We can have different effects with different kind of brush and the quantity of water on the paper to yeah. give texture. Okay. So yeah, and that is that is the brush stroke and effect video. Okay. Yes, we, yeah. Are we and going I think to that, see that Yes, we are going to we, we are going to bring up I'm going to bring up the other one that you um basically said about the brush strokes, which is the root yeah. uh touch. No, yeah. before that, before that, before the root. Or you can show the root first if you want to, that's fine. Then we can show the video after that, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, so it's coming up now is this one, which is kind of very in depth, isn't it? So when I'm looking at this one. Yeah, this is the root. Oh. And you can see how the texture has been created using different brush strokes. Yeah. So this is in fact one of the first, my first solo exhibition in Reading had this painting and it was sold. This is that painting. And you know, by creating this one, like how long normally that takes? Like you know, it can be because it's uh, if you dry it with a hairdryer, as you were saying before, um, you know, normally these it's very fast. It's very fast. I think this kind of work, depending on the size, if it is a small work, it can be done in a day. If you want to do it slightly bigger, then maybe two days, three days. Okay. Okay. Yes. And, and so this is now the texture, texture yeah. created with brush strokes, and the other video that you have, brush strokes and effect, that yeah. will show the creation of textures. Here are some simple techniques like a wash with a flat brush loaded with paint, yeah. drawing it across the... But we can't see it on the screen, can we? Not yet. With the same flat brush. Okay. Um. Uh, we can hear the audio, but the video is somehow not coming. The video was not coming, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah so I'll, I'll, I'll try and uh, get it up again. I think it's sometimes with the screen. There we go. This is just wash with a flat brush. The same flat brush can be used to draw lines, straight lines. 
Okay. Again, with the flat brush, I'm creating a pattern, a very simple pattern created with the flat brush. And in all these cases, I'm using the paint on dry paper. And you can see how dark it is. So I have used a very dark mixture with very little water. Now I'm going to use even less water. Oh, why did you can repeat it? You can repeat it? No. Okay. Here it is a dry brush, almost dry brush I'm using. And you can see the texture created. Hmm. So with very little paint, when you put light stroke, this is where the watercolor paper is very good for getting this kind of effect. So that gives the effect of fabric. This is a technique which is very useful, known as lifting in watercolor. This is called lifting. I'm doing that with coffee. First, I'm painting a little area with thick paint. And then I will allow it to dry. Then I'll use a thin brush and just water and create whatever I want to do, a little pattern on it with water. Nothing else but water and the thin brush. And use the towel, the kitchen towel to lift the paint. You can go on repeating till you get as much paint lifted as you wish. When you see the image later on, you will see how it gets lifted. You can see the process here. This is just pressing the brush sideways to get something like petals. And I think we can uh, stop the video here because the rest of it is also showing dry brush effect. I don't think we have much time left. So maybe we should stop it here and continue with the rest of the program. And uh, we can we can uh, you know skip showing the other video that was there for showing the effect. I think people will get a rough idea of how coffee can be used. So this is one of my paintings. It is. I did it during Diwali last year. It is about light. And uh, you can now, I think, be able to see the kind of effects that I've created using brush strokes and tonal values.
this is something to light us up and this one is uh, i call it sadhana it is the what is happening for the past year everyone was going through a very difficult time and it was like the storm we had yes the cyclonic storm in bengal it was very much like that happening within us and this painting shows that maybe music singing can calm us down when we are having such a turmoil inside us this is all very wonderful and i think i have got another one that he sent us um before as well and i i can't you know i'll take this opportunity to share that one as well it's called the stem stem we should leave out that is a video it will take time no so let's take time, take time we can skip forward a little maybe yeah it comes out wonderful like you know just the shape yeah, whatever so technique uh, whatever techniques i have shown earlier has been used here and the other one is the unfair the unfair one Do you have that? Yes, yeah i have yeah. got that is i think one. very important that is very <laughs> important for us absolutely because absolutely. life is full of life is full of such disappointment and life has nothing permanent about it this whole uh, epidemic has showed us that and this is the one so i can this see is the there one is yes this is beautiful this is when a child builds sand castles on the seashore does it with utmost sincerity without even knowing that it will be washed away the next moment and when it is washed away it goes they forget it they build it again so this is something we should like uh, follow in our lives also that not to become too obsessed or too attached to things and let it go when it has to happen this is really wonderful isn't it and it uh, looks like that is there is there a story behind that picture Yes, there is. The story is my granddaughter. I was with okay. her on the beach, and this is my granddaughter who was in dismay at first when the water washed away all her castles. But next moment, she forgot about it and she started building more castles. And now this year, for the last one and a half years, I haven't seen them. My children and grandchild so looking at this picture i get the feeling of the good times i had with them yes yeah wonderful isn't it very nice yeah. and i think i'm i'm so you're sure looking forward to that time again isn't it when we come out of this um pandemic and i hope that it right, comes right for yeah. you as well yeah, yeah. But the whole thing I wanted to, I think I wanted to say is that art helps us to overcome such situations because it is a release of our inner feelings that comes out through the art. There is nothing right or wrong about art. Anyone can paint. It is mainly the expression which we want to bring out through our work. and this teaches us that 
Mistakes are okay. We make mistakes. We learn from our mistakes. That's not the end of the world. So our teacher has to be positive and to move on. And that's that's very powerful, I think. Uh, you know, on that note, I will, I will ask you, like, you know, how do you, what keeps you motivated for the okay. painting? Uh, what keeps me motivated is, uh, it comes from within. It is something, some kind of a driving force that comes from within that makes me happy. When I do art, it makes me happy. And I read somewhere, actually speaking, it is, it allows a person to do something creative only when that person is happy. Apparently, it may seem that they are going through some trouble or something is bothering them. But within, they must be having that kind of happiness to uh, do something creative. And this whole business of doing something new, something new needs something creative is the driving force. It is a wonderful journey, I can tell you. It is a wonderful journey. And more than the end product, it is the entire journey, the conversation with your piece of paper, with your materials. It is constant dialogue going on, I think, between the artist and the art creator. And that's why I, I don't know what the word boredom means. I have never been bored in my life. I think that's quite important, isn't it? Like, you know, to kind of keep practicing what we practice. Um, so, yeah, so I think um, we are coming towards the end, but, you know, one of the questions that I would like to before Soma comes in as well towards the end, I think because she has got some questions for you, I'm, I'm certain. Um, just to ask you that, you know, there are lots of people who say that we can't paint, you know, creative, like uh, painting is not our job, like drawing, I can't draw. What what would be your message for for people to kind of start thinking about it? How important is the structure? Uh, maybe uh, people should have some kind of endurance because you cannot just uh, do something overnight and uh, do something to your expectation. It is mainly not what people will say. It is my expectation. What I want to see from my work is very important. And for that, one has to go on trying till one is happy with one's own expression. And anyone can paint, I'm telling you. I don't think it is that difficult a thing. It is something we must not be rigid about the notions that we have. That our art has to look like this. Art has to be done this way. No, I don't think so. One, one should have the freedom to try out, to experiment. And it may not be, we have seen such great artists in the past, like Van Gogh, who did his own way and people did not, people criticized it when he was doing it, but later on it got accepted and appreciated. Jackson Pollock. People may not call it the traditional art at all, but it is art. So only through their experiments they have created something new. And if you look at Jackson Pollock's art, well, it is not like the traditional art that happened before him. But see the expression in it, see the emotion in it. 
So I think anyone can do it. There's nothing hard and fast about that. It is one's own way of expressing oneself. And that may not match with someone else's. How does it matter? Now, at this stage, I'll bring in Shoma. And I think that she has got, you know, we're, we're reaching towards the end. I believe that there will be some conversation. We've got lots and lots of comments coming in. And I'm trying to kind of show them on the screen one by one. And thank you very much for, to our audience as well for joining us today. It's been amazing. So, Shoma, over to you. Yeah, so it is like an amazing, amazing session. Thank you, Indrani, for having me in this show. And uh, thank you, Sudakshanadi, for enriching us with this wonderful, enriching uh, coffee art technique. Uh, Sudakshanadi, I would thank like Thank you to for being there, Shoma. It is my pleasure that an artist is there. One, um, it's an honor to, uh, I'd like to learn more from you. Definitely I'll get in touch. Uh, so Dakshanandri, I'd like to ask you, like uh, uh, all uh, most of your artworks, we were seeing a lot of messages. So uh, wonderful messages. And you know, art is a form, I believe, where through which you can uh, give a very strong message. To uh, We cannot give verbally. Through art, we can give. So, uh, so Dakshanari, what is your message? Like, uh, to gay people are stressed, you know, around the world in different, uh, due to COVID, due to other other situations. Uh, so, how how art may help them? What will be your message to them? Like, how practicing of art will uh, help them deal with the stress, with the situation? I think the main thing what we find difficult to accept is change. In this last year and a half almost, the change that we have witnessed is unprecedented. And we don't know how to adapt to that change. That creates a problem within us. And I think art can teach us that. When we start painting, we can't know the end result and go on painting. So the whole process it goes on changing. And we adapt to whatever we have done. We try to correct it. We try to make it the way we want it. But it has its own way also. And we need to understand that. So as I said before, it is a dialogue between the artist and the artwork. And that helps one to move on. So if one can practice art, any form of art, need not be visual art. It can be dancing, singing, any kind of performing art. That is a sadhana. As I mentioned in my one of my paintings, that I call it sadhana. I don't know what is the exact word, English word. I don't know whether it is uh, meditation. Meditation would be more uh, perfect word for it. So whatever we do, any form of art is a kind of meditation. And it is, the aim should be to derive joy from it. Not what people will say about it, whether it will be appreciated or not. We should not bother about those things. Whether I am able to appreciate my work, whether I am happy with my work is important. Thank you, Siddharth Chanavi. It's wonderful. Very well said. That's a very strong message. And on that note, I'm going to uh, bring in uh, Jantava back to the um, studio. It's been a wonderful, and I'm sure that we are all um, watching and we have participated today as well. So, Jantava, you know, your final comments or uh, something that you want to share. I know that you have been uh, watching us doing the painting. Sorry, I was me on me. Um, so absolutely, it was fabulous watching all of you uh, going through the the artwork. Um, I'm really not an artist and, you know, but this is fascinating. I'll definitely try it out. 
I'm going to watch this video uh, again and slowly try out at my own pace. Um, great. I'm a that slow would be great. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I've collected all my coffee right now. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, the main thing is, I think Shudokhinadi said it all. So it's about, you know, it's a music and the arts. The art, any kind of art form is like a sadhana or um, meditation is the closest English word, but it probably does not uh, completely define the word sadhana. So um, sadhana goes, I guess, I guess a bit beyond that. But having said that, yes, so it's meditation, perhaps, if you would want. Uh, and uh, lovely, it was absolutely fascinating to see the strokes of the brush bring the coffee color to life. And, um, and, and of course, I was you know, looking at Shudokinadi's painting. I, I'm going, Shudokinadi said earlier, oh, this is a simple one. You can do this simple one. I'm saying, what? This, <laughs> oh, it was, uh, for me, it's really complex. Uh, but I will definitely try that. And, and obviously, thank you, Shudokinadi, for being with us here. Um, thank you for inviting me. It was my pleasure to have such a session. And as I told you, that I enjoy it so much myself, painting with coffee, that it, this gave me an opportunity to share it with others, which is very important. Absolutely. And, uh, I, and I never knew that you were, you were into this till a couple of years back. We've been associated, what, last... 25 years in Singapore days and uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember going to your house and going to each other's house and we used to have these rehearsals uh, yeah. and my, my younger one was, was six months old, the elder one was four right. and a half years. Yeah. That was amazing. So, yeah. It's, um, so, and, yeah. and obviously Manav Utsav is, is something which is close to me as well. Last year we were, we were partners and uh, and Indrani, and uh, thank you so much for that. And Shoma, of course, you, this blue palette seems to be very interesting, and uh, I, I look forward to your events as well uh, as a co partner. So, yeah, thank you very much. I mean, it's, the, the journey is getting exciting year after year, yeah. I think. And now that we've added the coffee element to it, I think it's going to stay more longer with us. But I the think we have to do that. I'm saying the aroma is there. The coffee aroma is there with us. Yes, of course, I can feel that. I can feel that. Yes. With my well, I've, I've yeah. not done much, but I've done a few bits. But I think it's drying you up. You can it's still kind of feel the aroma. The boot is creating a gin rani. Is it okay? Yes. So is that, that's the thing. You initiated you. You have. So but you started. So, it's so now you should carry on. True. I will. Visual. It's also the sense of smell that we we you know relish right now so it's both smell and uh, visual so there's two two aspects to it two dimensions to it absolutely to absolutely and that's the best thing actually so i think that we have to you know i was thinking as we were looking into your painting and all of it we can do workshops with children here as well i think the summer holidays are coming up so we can we can quickly go into doing that and i think that they will enjoy it. They will like it. Um, but also with uh, elderly, um, you know, population here, I believe that they will like it. So with the care homes, and and I know that some of our partners are very much interested working with elderly uh, population with the care homes. One is celebrate our similarities, and they have been talking about it. So definitely, like we will be looking forward to this one. This is only our starting. And thank you very much, uh, Shadakunadi, again for joining us. It's been Thank wonderful. You, and we, want, we want you to stay with us and connect more and, and uh, you know, help us build it uh, with the younger yeah. population, but also with the uh, older population here. And it would be wonderful. Yeah, so looking forward to it. That will be great. I would definitely like to help people who have time and would like to experiment. Thank you very much. That's, that's really excellent. And on that note, we will bring it to a close with your, um, you know, of course, the image that you have, um, light, oh my light, lovely picture there. And stay tuned yeah. with us on Manavutsa. And thank you very much again to join, everyone. John, so this is...